Hi friends, Rev Janet Jones from High Country United Church up in Camilla, Ontario, here with you in Camilla, Ontario. It's going to be an interesting service by the sounds of it. Before we begin, let us acknowledge the land that we work and worship on. Long before today, as we gather here, there have been Aboriginal peoples who have been the stewards of this place. We stand on the ancestral and traditional lands of the Chippewa, Ojibwe, Mississauga, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Iroquois, Huron Wendat, and Attawandaran Neutrals people. Let us sing through our blessing twice. Humbly we walk here, humbly we pray here, humbly we bless this ground. Humbly we walk here, humbly we pray here, humbly we bless this ground. And we give thanks to the many who have cared for this land before our coming. Announcements today is Pentecost, and because it's Pentecost, we celebrate. And so my excited energy is because of Pentecost. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. And uh, before we begin anything, a huge thank you to Betty. Betty, say hi. Hi. She's, <laughs> she's doing music again for us. Hi. Uh, so many great comments last week. So we really appreciate having live music. So thank you, Betty. Um, a few announcements. So in case you haven't heard already, the Strawberry Supper has been canceled. And so if you wish to... Um, support the church in lieu of how you would have supported it with a strawberry supper. Uh, we are accepting financial donations for the food you might have cooked or for the meal you might have ate. And we also understand that if uh, the times are a little different, so if you can't afford, that's okay too. But if you can, we really appreciate your financial support to continue the ministries of our church that still go on while this pandemic life is going on. Uh, in other news, um, Mary Ewan has mentioned that her brother-in-law, Alistair Ewan, has passed away, and so we're holding their family in prayer. As you know, they cannot gather to celebrate his life, so that's kind of sad. Um, and let me see, Sheila's doing good in her recovery, so we, Sheila Orton, so we celebrate that. In regular news... Uh, we have our daily reflections that are usually online at 10 a.m., except for Sunday mornings, and it's worship at 10 a.m. We hope you can join us. And this week, starting Monday, uh, our nightly prayers move to 9.30 p.m., except for Sundays where they'll stay at 8 p.m. from the church. So just another reminder that if something's not working for you, you don't like the time, you really want to be part of the prayers, but 9.30 is too late or too early, let me know. I'm more than willing to change it, but we're going to try this out for a short time just to see if it works. And this Wednesday, I'm so excited that we are going to try live worship via Zoom at one o'clock. And so for those who haven't participated in Zoom, there will be a congregational email coming out on Monday that'll have information on how to log in. And for those who won't log in on their computer but will call in on their phone, uh, there will be information about that as well. A hard copy of the worship service will be emailed at that time, just in case there are tech glitches. <laughs> Never happens, right? <laughs> but just in case there are. And there will be printed copies available at the church probably Monday afternoon. I would say if you're looking for a hard copy of it, come by Monday night just in case my day gets crazy. And so hard copies of the order of service will be there, including the lyrics for all the songs and information on how to dial in as well. So we hope you can join us. We will be doing communion together. So have whatever you wish to eat and whatever you wish to drink at your side. I think that's all for now. If I miss something, stay tuned for news that'll come out on Monday, all right? Let us begin worship on this Pentecost Sunday by lighting our candle. <laughs> 
And so long before us, there was someone who said something and did amazing things that people worshipped and followed him. And as they followed him, they wondered just who he was. And they were so bold to ask him, who are you? And he said, I am the light. Let us hold the light of God in our hearts from wherever we are. We're going to join the McKee family on our call to worship. God of wind and fire, when you when send, send us your spirit, you create something new inside us. God of mighty oceans and still waters, when, when you receive your baptism, baptism you, you create something new inside us. Pour out your spirit, let the sacred waters flow. May our heart and our minds be open wide to receive your gifts of life. Thank you. All right, Betty, are we ready to sing? Our first song is Holy Spirit, Hear Us. music is beautiful <laughs> and we've asked the McKees to also help us with our opening prayer and so let us pray God Jesus Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit we rejoice in your presence we breathe into our worship the power of your spirit your spirit of love joy hope and peace may we be overrun with the gifts of your spirit as we gather from wherever we are Continue to help us expect the unexpected and welcome spontaneity and unpredictability as we live our faith. As we open ourselves to possibility, we ask forgiveness for all those times we have limited your spirit, or when we have expected little, or when we accepted something mediocre, when we should have known there was more. We take a moment of silence to search our hearts for those moments as we give them over to you for forgiveness. Oh, Holy One, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for spirit. We thank you that you infuse our lives with your goodness and grace. And we thank you for your forgiveness. Help us, O oh God, to continue to be who you call us to be, the church wherever we are. We pray this together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us join Leela in our scripture reading. In chapter two of the book of Acts, we read about the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
As we hear these words, may you feel the Holy Spirit enter in. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a noise came from heaven. It sounded like a strong wind blowing. This noise filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw something that looked like flames of fire. The flames were separated and stood over each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak different languages. The Holy Spirit was giving them the power to do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Friends, let us pray. O oh, Holy One, we ask you to be within the message we are about to hear. We ask you to be with us as we are the church wherever we are. Be in our souls, in our hearts, in our minds, in our ears, and in our mouth. But bless this message we are about to receive, that we may hear you, your voice within it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for those who follow along in our daily reflections, you know we've been kind of walking through the ideas of Pentecost and some of the questions that might arise this week. And some of them are quite fascinating. Like, what does a tongue of fire look like? Or a fung of tire, for those who got to chuckle with us. Or is it just a flame of fire? And are we, what is the church? Is the church the building? Or is the church the people? And so some of the things that have come up for me really is, I feel like in this mm, time of pandemic that we live in, I feel like it is a time of Pentecost for each of us, that the Holy Spirit kind of has taken that which is happening in our world and just saying, hey, this is a time to really infuse my church, my church is, to be and do different. And if we have that perspective, looking for the opportunity and the possibility, then it shifts from the negativity. And so for some, it gives us some time to personally reflect on our faith and do some inner work. For others, it's like, you know what? I have a passion for this. I just haven't had the time to do it. And so I'm going to do this. For others, it's just a time for rest because they're feeling burnt out. We do a lot in our church, even for our country church. For others, it's doing our family trees that we've been longing to work on for a little while. Although we want to be in the church together, although we want to gather together in all ways, because in the Bible it says, you should never hesitate to gather. I think it should say, except for. <laughs> When the province had you shut down. This week, we've heard some uh, disturbing stories, however, of hmm, stories of racism. There was a recent story of the lady who was walking the dog in the park, and uh, um, a black man had approached her and said, please put your dog on a leash. That did not go well. Um, the story really in our hearts and on the news right now is that of George Floyd, who, I hope I have his name right, I apologize if I don't, so many things in my head, but um, who was killed by a police officer who was using brutal force. This is a time we can be the church. This is a time we can be the church from wherever we are, from whoever we are, from however we are. And it's simply by being an ally to those who are different from us, in whatever way that means. And for some, it's going to be a challenge because um, our upbringing impacts some of the things that we do and some of the things that we think. I remember seeing a number of people post, um, because I'm white, I can blah, 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 blah. 
And it's like, I can jog, I can walk, I can go to the grocery store, I can pump gas, all these things without feeling um, anything. And yet um, our people of color necessarily can't. To be honest, as a female, some of those I don't feel safe doing even alone. And it's just how society has shaped us. It's how sometimes media has shaped us. And sometimes it's how um, some of our, even our upbringing in faith has shaped us. And so this is a great time for us to think about who we are as individuals and who we are as the church. Because if God says we are all one in the spirit, all of one body, I am ordaining you as the church to do good in this world. I don't think God ever says, I want you to agree with everything, all the time, everybody. There's something about the beauty of diversity, the beauty of celebrating our differences and understanding our differences and understanding how our differences shape us and how our differences create context. And by learning from the diversity of those in the church, we can learn from and with each other how to be better in this world. And so there's that term that you might hear, and some might be so sick of hearing, it's called white privilege. And it's just by the skin color that we have brings some power that we might not even know exists. And in seminary, we had to take a lot of courses on it, a lot of courses on it. And um, I am grateful because some of the things um, I didn't understand, and I also understood from there the privileges um, that some of my white male counterparts have aren't the same privileges I have as a white woman. And so that helped me at least start to understand, oh, well, they get this, but we don't, or we live in fear. It just helped me empathize a little more with what our other brothers and sisters are going through. Not saying I understand it completely, but it gave me a tiny bit of an insight. And so we can use our social media accounts, we can write our politicians, we can write a letter to our own police forces. If we feel that they are doing good work, celebrate it with them. If we feel there is injustice happening, we need to call them on it. We are called to be people of justice, of equality or equity, people of love. And I remember reading um, in, I think it was the Dufferin County Archives snippet on the 1918 flu. Something about, it was, they did not, the, the, the media or whatever, anyway, kindness was not well reported or documented in the time of the 1918 flu. And yet, in the time of our pandemic, it's being documented, just news and all these gatherings of uh, social media gatherings, I shall say, of people coming together to help our community. And this is what I hope we can continue focusing on, is the kindness we can share regardless of who we are helping or who is in need, and not to be afraid to stand up, even if we fear for ourselves. Do it safely, but we can also at the very least record, right? Anyway, it's a lot to think about and I, it saddens me that that stuff is still happening in 2020. But I also understand humanity and humanity is imperfect. So I pray that we strive not to be perfect, but to be better. That if there are cycles in our own lives from our upbringing or whatever, that we have the courage, the power, and the divine spirit within us to break the cycles. That we have the time and the energy to invest in ourselves so God knows we're investing in God. 
And I think of those people who were first gathered in that room who were just going, what? You, I can understand you. I can understand you. What is happening here? I wonder how much they had to learn from each other to do good in their world in that time. I wonder how much advocating they had to do, how many allies they needed to gather. I wonder a lot. But I do know that we are called to be the church. Be it in this building, be it in your home, be it online, be it on the phone. We are called to be the church. And if we can share hope and positivity, love and alliance for those who aren't getting justice, who aren't getting equity in their lives, then we are doing what we are called to do. As I think about Pentecost, I think about our creed, and I hope that you will say it with me. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And so friends, I want to remind you that if you are going through something and you're feeling an injustice is happening and you need an ally, call on your church friends. It is my hope that when we are called on, we have open minds and open hearts, that we can listen to the story and discern where we can help move you forward. Because injustice kind of holds us still in our life and in our faith. I just ask that God be with us this day, all our days, and everything we endure, everything we're going through, but the spirit of Pentecost just mm, take hold of us. Take hold of us so we can be powerful presence for God today. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the story of Pentecost, for the time of excitement it must have been for all who were gathered. We thank you that you call us to be the church wherever we are and whatever we do. And we thank you, O oh God, that your spirit never leaves us. But sometimes we just need to remember it's there and take hold of it and say, let's go for a ride. God, help us to take each moment, each opportunity that comes our way and turn it into something special. Be in our hearts, be in our souls, our minds, our ears, and our mouths, oh God. Amen. At this time, we take up our offering, and just a reminder for, um, for those who wish to make an offering and they haven't, you can mail a check into the church, you can e-transfer at highcountryunited at oracom.com, or visit us on canadahelps.org. Uh, all these ways to donate are in our FAQ on our website, if for some reason it's easier to do it that way. Just a reminder, too, that from June 1st to 30th, Canada Helps is having a giving kind of challenge. So uh, every dollar donated is an entry for the organization to win an additional $20,000. So think about it. I will. <laughs> All right, Betty, are we ready to sing our song? All right, let's do it.
And God of all, on this Pentecost Sunday, we give you thanks that we can worship and see the church. But this church is just a building. We give you thanks for the church being distributed at this time, even though it is a harder time. We think of so many in our world, oh God, this day, as we live through COVID-19 as a reality, and yet as we live through hope, knowing that one day things will be normal again. Help us to be patient and vigilant and aware. We continue to pray for our friends in congregant settings as they are the highest risk. So our friends at the Avalon and Shelburne residents, Bethsaida, Lord Dufferin, Dufferin Oaks, Montgomery Village, Family Transition Place, Choices Youth Shelter, Community Living, March of Dimes residences, hospices, hospitals, and so much more. God be with the staff, the residents, and their loved ones. As we know, these times are a little more stre stressful in those settings. And we give thanks for those who oversee protocol protocols and policies for the good work that's going on. We pray for our friends at Peel Duffer and Acquired Brain Injury Services, that they are well and participants are doing okay. And we pray that everybody's getting what they need. We also pray for our creative partners on stage who would have had their show this week. And so we're thinking of them and hoping and praying that they're enjoying the extra practice time. We're thinking of friends and families, oh God. We're thinking of Sheila Orton as she recovers from eye surgery and pray that mm, cancer is not to be found anywhere and that her eye is healing well. For Tessa, who's recovering after the bonfire accident. For Marston and Bob, John, Bobby and Aaron, who are all going through some medical stuff. And just pray that doctors and nurses and all those who are part of their caregiving team can hear what they need and are getting the treatment or the recovery desired. We're thinking of Lloyd and his recovery and his wife Doris and pray that things are coming along. Thinking of Nancy and her foot, God, may she be healed so she can dance. <laughs> We're also thinking of Daphne and Winnie and pray they're not feeling too lonely. Thinking of Darlene with her sister Joan not doing so good and pray that Joan's getting the comfort and help she needs as well as her husband Arnold and their daughters. We're also thinking of uh, Lee, who is undergoing some exploration stuff. And Lisa and Ryan and all that's going on in their lives, oh God. I pray that their transition is positive. We're thinking of our families who are grieving as well. And so we're still thinking of Doreen Wilson's family, Stephanie's family, the Stavely family. Nancy and Christine, our friend Marilyn, you and Burke's family, and Alistair Ewan's family. God, continue to wrap them in your warm embrace, giving them peace, love, and comfort as needed. God, we all have something going on in our lives. Hopefully someone's experiencing boredom, <laughs> but I pray that everyone is experiencing joy in some way, even if in a moment. We just ask you to take your spirit and pour your spirit on us in these times that no matter what's going on in our lives, we can still be the church you call us to be. Help us to share your love and your light. Let me take a moment of silence, O oh God, to give you the prayers that weigh on us this day.
O oh God of all. It feels very strange not hearing the children playing downstairs while we're praying. <laughs> And I ask you to be with all our Sunday school friends who would normally be preparing for a year-end gathering. Just ask that they are keeping well, that their families are doing okay, and our Sunday school teachers are enjoying a little break. God be with us this day and all our days until we see each other again soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to sing our closing hymn, and this is one of my favorites. All right, Betty, are you ready? I'm not going to get up and dance because then candles will fall over, TVs will crash. It'll be great. <laughs> All right, we're ready. <laughs> worship and that you feel the spirit infusing your body and your soul that you are still the church and that you're doing the church stuff of your heart just by being who you are and in what you do but know that you are maybe alone not lonely though because <laughs> God's got you and so do we here at High Country United Church. Amen. Let us sing this out. <laughs>